So Comcast just announced an 8% increase in its dividend. It reported earnings and has higher revenues and higher profits. Is Comcast a stock that we want to have in our dividend growth portfolio? For the answer to that question, stay tuned. Hey guys, Kevin Burgess again with yet another video. This is an analysis of Comcast. Comcast is a, a, actually the largest cable company in the US. It's currently the sixth largest holding in my portfolio and it's worth taking a deeper dive into Comcast to see if it's worthwhile for the portfolio moving forward. So if you like videos like this, if you could give it a thumbs up, it would mean the world to me. If you want to see more like this from me, subscribe to the channel, ring the bell so you'll be uh, notified of videos as they come out in the future. Uh, as you know, I'm not a financial advisor, so every person is different, every portfolio is different. This is simply a video that lets you walk with me through this process where I look at these stocks that are in my portfolio to determine if I want to invest in them further or get rid of them or hold on to them. This is an important journey and the journey that we're on is a journey of personal freedom. The way we get there is by investing in companies who produce dividends. These dividends are passive income. As Warren Buffett said, uh, if you don't find a way to make money while you're sleeping, you will work until you die. So we're looking for passive income Dividend stocks is a way to get that. And so what we're doing is analyzing these stocks to determine if they have value in our dividend growth portfolio that provides passive income for our personal freedom. I'm currently living that personal freedom right now. I have retired early and I'm able to do what I want to do when I want to do it. And it's because of passive income. So. If that's a goal of yours, if you're just starting out in the passive income journey, or if you're midway through the process, or if you're getting close to the end, uh, hopefully these will be helpful to you. And um, I'd love to hear about it in the comments below about where you are in your journey. That being said, let's get started with the analysis of Comcast. Comcast is a global media and technology company with three primary businesses, Comcast Cable, NBC Universal and Sky. Comcast has competition. Its largest competitor is Charter Communications. Uh, however, it is roughly twice the size of their nearest competitor. They have three segments. They have a cable communication segment, which is 54% of their business. This is the segment of the company that offers high speed internet, video, voice, wireless, and security and automation services. So, this is the traditional cable company. Uh, as we think of Comcast today, they also have a segment called NBC Universal. It's 29% uh, of their business. Uh, and according to their 10K, it's one of the world's leading media and entertainment companies that develops, produces, and distributes entertainment, news, and information, sports, et cetera, et cetera. So then they have a third segment, which is called Sky. It is about 17% of their business, and it's one of Europe's leading entertainment companies operating in six territories, including three of the largest pay television markets in Western Europe. Its competitive advantages, it has powerful brand names, and there are high barriers to entry in the cable business. From a risk perspective, they have competition, not as much on the cable side, but they do have competition in both Sky and NBC Universal. NBC Universal not only has content uh, around streaming, but it also has um, you know theme parks and things like that. So obviously, competition in all of those areas for both NBC Universal and Sky. Litigation is uh, a risk for them from an operational perspective. We also have the pandemic uh, impacted NBC Universal significantly. So it's you know worthwhile to think of of those from a risk perspective and regulation. There could be additional regulation in the cable business, which could impact Comcast's future on the cable side. Let's look at their capital allocation. They have grown their dividend uh, over the last five years in the low double digits, 
they um, just announced an 8% increase for this year, and their dividend yield is currently 2.2%. So if you take a 2.2% yield and a five-year CAGR of 13%, it doesn't take too long to get to a dividend that's that's meaningful uh, from a yield-to-cost perspective. Uh, their shares outstanding. You see that they have come down uh, about uh, 900 million shares over the last 10 years. So that's uh, I think they're beginning to speed that up. Uh, they know that they are focused on uh, a buyback program now. They've just topped that back off again uh, with, uh, I think it was $10 billion that they announced uh, yesterday or day before. Total sales, you see their sales are increasing. So that's the way we like to see it. Their earnings per share is growing. Their free cash flow is growing. Their earnings payout ratio is in the uh, 30% range and it's pretty consistent. So that's a good sign. And then they have their free cash flow uh, ratio is growing, but it's still in the uh, you know mid 30% range. So it's still very healthy. They have a dividend safety rating according to Simply Safe dividends of 89, and they have an A minus credit rating. Their net debt to capital is uh, a little higher than we like, so they are dealing with a bit of debt. Their interest coverage ratio is struggling. They're at a 4.74. We'd like to see that at eight or above. So they're, they do have some debt that they are working off, and it's related to these acquisitions. One of the analyses that I read about Comcast is that the Sky acquisition uh, was actually, there was a lot of competition for it, and so they paid... Uh, way more than they should have for Sky. Therefore, they incurred a lot of debt. In terms of valuation, they are fair valued according to Morningstar at $60. Uh, their current uh, price at the time of this uh, recording is $48.46. Um, their return on invested capital is relatively low at 9%. Uh, and I think that's important for us as we move forward here. Uh, Comcast, according to uh, uh, Fast Graphs, is in a certainly investable range, certainly in a fair value range. So it would not be a bad investment for us to uh, to continue to invest in Comcast. And in terms of the uh, price target, the average price target, according to Seeking Alpha, is sixty two dollars and eighty cents. So our current price is forty eight. Valuation is sixty. Price target is 63. Uh, you know, it looks like something that is um, has some value to it. So let's look at a, our summary here. Solid capital allocation metrics, strong financial metrics, decent return on capital, return on invested capital. Uh, they currently appear to be discounted by 20% per Morningstar. The debt, though, is a bit higher than we like to see, and their acquisitions seem to be add-ons rather than an integral to the cable internet business. So one of the things I like to look for when a company acquires another company is whether there's synergy there, whether it makes sense. In Comcast's case, I don't see that these uh, acquisitions, either NBC Universal or Sky, makes sense for the cable business. They have bought a streaming company. I guess you could argue that the streaming could flow through to their cable business, but their cable business provides the service of cable. And so the streaming piece of it is in a highly competitive market. And I'm not sure that a cable management team understands and can uh, compete well in an environment where they're producing streaming and movies and things like that. Then they go and buy Sky, which is uh, European, a lot in, in England and, and Italy and, and those areas. And, and while it's really more about pay television, it, it does kind of uh, dovetail uh, with the cable business, although it doesn't add anything to it. It is really more of an expansion than... Uh, it, having a company that's going to actually add value to the other company. So to me, the cable business, the NBC Universal business, and the Sky business are three separate businesses with very little synergy between those to add additional value for the company. So as I said, Comcast is the sixth largest investment in my portfolio. I entered into that looking at the financial metrics, the capital allocation metrics. 
And I, I, I saw their sales were growing. I saw their earnings were growing. They're growing their dividend quickly. There's a lot of good things happening with Comcast. And what this analysis has helped me to see that strategically, I don't see how all of this fits together. So therefore, I don't see the compelling story for Comcast moving forward. And I think I'm a little late to the party because other investors are seeing that as well. The stock is trading down even further. So I am have decided that because I can't see the compelling story of the three businesses together, that it's probably better for me to exit this investment. I will do that over time on strength. I'm not going to just going to go out tomorrow and sell it, but I will sell it over time, even if I take a loss on it, just because I don't see the compelling story and therefore I'm not passionate about this investment anymore. So as I get better at these analyses, uh, one of the things I'm looking for is a compelling story. And if I don't see a compelling story, then there are a lot of compelling stories out there and I need to focus my investment and my time on those compelling stories. So my next video is going to be on Aflac, which is the next holding in my portfolio. So until then, I'll see you on the next video.